Good morning. Welcome to First Lutheran Church of Columbia Heights, Minnesota. I'm Pastor Bonnie Wilcox and I invite you to join us for this special Pentecost service where I'm wearing some red and uh, I invite you to grab something in your house that's red. Like I have this fun scarf that has little Scotty dogs on it, but anything that's red so that every time you hear the word Holy Spirit or Alleluia or Hallelujah or anytime you want to do it, just wave that red scarf or a red ribbon or a red tie or a red sock, if that's all you have, uh, maybe a red hat uh, to celebrate uh, the incoming and uh, the indwelling and incoming of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost, which took place uh, 50 days after Jesus rose from the dead. This marks the end of the Easter season and the beginning of uh, the Pentecost season. Welcome. We're glad you're here. I also invite you to light a candle uh, to remind you that the light of Christ shines through you to the world. And to gather later for Holy Communion a piece of bread or a wafer, wine juice or grape juice uh, that you can use for Holy Communion. We are also gathering today at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning in person at church outdoors. Uh, to start moving back into our schedule and tradition of life of worshiping together at church. Uh, it has been a long 14 months. We know this and we thank you for your patience, your tolerance, and especially your cooperation in helping us uh, avoid contamination, infection from the COVID-19 virus uh, for the sake of others. Welcome to worship.
let us pray. Holy One, for all of the ways you speak to us, in rushing wind, in dancing flames, in words we understand, and in all that transcends language, we give thanks. Give us courage to speak your love everywhere we go, to everyone we meet. Amen. Hey everyone, welcome to worship on this Pentecost Sunday. On a hot summer day, a fan can keep us cool. Now, how does it do that? By blowing air on us. So I think I'm gonna turn my fan on right now. And can we see the air that the fan's blowing? I don't see the air. So how do I know that my fan is working? Well, I can see that the fan is blowing these pieces of yarn that I have tied on it. And I can feel the air of the fan on my body. And I can hear the noise of the fan as the blades spin and it blows the air. So on the day of Pentecost, the Bible tells us that Jesus' followers were all gathered together in one place and that God sent the Holy Spirit to give them the power to teach others about Jesus. Now, they couldn't see the Holy Spirit. So how did they know that the Holy Spirit was there? Well, the Bible says that they knew the Holy Spirit was there because they could hear the sound of a mighty rushing wind from the heavens. Wow, that must have been amazing. And they knew that the Holy Spirit was there because they could see that there were flaming tongues of fire. That's kind of hard to picture, isn't it? Flaming tongues. So they couldn't see the Holy Spirit, but they could see these things and they could hear the sound of the rushing wind. And finally, they knew the Holy Spirit was there because they could feel the Holy Spirit's power in them. When they were filled with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit gave them the ability to speak in different languages and to understand each other, even though they didn't know all of the different languages. And they could tell everyone about Jesus. They couldn't see the Holy Spirit, but they could feel the power of the Holy Spirit in their life, just like we can feel the air from this fan. And so, Today, I want you to know that the Holy Spirit is with you, even though we don't see it. I don't know if I see it in my place right now, but I know that it is with us and the Holy Spirit is with you and me and everywhere because we can feel the Holy Spirit guiding us through each and every day. All right, pray with me, please. Holy God, we thank you for sending your Holy Spirit Help us to let you and let the Holy Spirit guide us throughout our day and to know that you are with us even though we cannot always see you. We love you, God. Amen. Our reading today is from the book of Acts, chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly, from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them and rested on each of them. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. I begin today with a parable, a story, told from an Irish pastor named Peter Rollins. Two rabbis, those are Jewish teachers, had been arguing for 20 years about how to understand just one chapter of the Bible. Every week for 20 years, they've been getting together to talk about what God is trying to say in this one chapter of the Bible. Their debate, what does God want from us? 
Is God offering mercy or judgment? Is it more important to follow the rules or to show mercy? On and on it goes, week after week, year after year. Once in a while, they come close to settling their argument, but then they begin to raise objections again, and their near agreement becomes debate and then argument, and on it goes 20 years. God has been listening to these rabbis in every one of their conversations for all these years. Finally, God's had enough. God's going to appear to the rabbis and settle things once and for all. When God appears to the rabbis and offers to give them the one true answer to the question, the rabbi's response is unexpected. They get mad. Go away, they say to God. Leave us alone. We need our weekly time together to wrestle with your word. We don't want the one answer. If you tell us the answer, then what do we do then? We won't have any reason to get together. Let us keep working on seeking understanding, wrestling with your word and with our relationships. The rabbis didn't want the answer. They didn't want the debate to end. They didn't want an easy way out. In the conversation or debate or argument, whatever you want to call it, the rabbis belong to each other. In seeking understanding, they have also developed a relationship of great depth. Not only have they discussed the meaning of God's word, but they have grown together as friends, listening to each other, praying together for the needs of the heart, and counting and looking forward to their time together. In other words, the belonging, the showing up to talk about God is important in their life. For these rabbis, life is more about belonging than certainty of belief. The relationship is more important than knowing all the answers. Some teachers of the faith in recent years have asked us to reconsider this traditional model of the church integration that many of us grew up with. This model that one must believe, then behave, then belong. It often screened out more people than it brought in or kept in. This flow seemed to expect that people first have correct beliefs, then order their lives by our shoulds and shouldn'ts, and then we will all let you in and you can belong. But it hasn't worked very well. Too many in my family, in my community, experienced the church as a place with a lot of shaming because they couldn't get it, the believing part. And they often walked away from the church for a long time or even the rest of their lives because right belief was considered more important than emphasizing belonging. Now, don't get me wrong. All three of these things, believing, behaving, and belonging, all have their place. They are important aspects of the church. To follow Jesus, to actively seek to do what Jesus needs from us, all three are a part of that journey. Today, as we heard the story of the promised Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit is at work through the disciples now 50 days since Jesus rose from the dead on Easter. Jesus has appeared several times to the disciples and others He's shared meals with them. They have touched the wounds in his hands and feet and his side. And then 10 days ago, Jesus ascended to heaven, his body taken up and away from earth. This is what the Holy Spirit is about. It is God at work in the world, giving life, giving faith, giving power. The Spirit gives for our sake. For our sake not for the Spirit's sake. That's what happened on that first Christian Pentecost. God's Holy Spirit came upon the disciples, gathered in a very large crowd, and gave them the power to speak about Jesus in different languages. 
Suddenly, they had the ability to use a language they did not know, and lives were changed. 3,000 people were baptized. Those 3,000 people did not have to demonstrate their knowledge of God's word in order to be baptized. They did not have to prove belief. They asked to be baptized, and they belonged. Again and again, in the stories of Jesus' life on earth, Jesus gave value and dignity, in fact, belonging, to nearly every human being he met. Sinners sought him out. Remember Zacchaeus in the tree? Outsiders flocked to hear him speak. At one time, 4,000 came to listen to Jesus, and when he realized they were hungry, he did a miracle of loaves and fishes to feed them all with leftovers. And these were not even Jews, but Gentiles. The unclean and the outcast begged for Jesus' mercy. The woman who had been sick and bleeding for 12 years dared to touch Jesus' clothes, even though she was untouchable. And Jesus made her clean and brought her into the fold. These people needed healing because they wanted community to belong in order that they might believe. They needed to be made whole in order to be part of the community. And Jesus made it possible for people to know that they belonged. That word belonging, who doesn't need to hear that message? And when I stop and really consider how difficult it must be to walk into church as a stranger, with the possibility of not knowing where to go, where to sit, how to act, or even what kind of clothes to wear. Isn't belonging the most important thing we can give to each other? When Jesus helped people to know that they belonged, it led to changed lives. It led to behaving in its best possible understanding out of belonging. Jesus' disciples heard him say again and again, if you belong to me, then be like me. You have watched me. What am I about? Seeking the lost, healing the sick, restoring hope for the hopeless. Now he says, do the same. Seek the lost, heal the sick, restore hope to the hopeless. Let them know they belong as well. Out of our practice at following Jesus, our attempts to be like Jesus, to be his hands of service, we move from belonging to believing to behaving. From belonging to behaving to believing. Following Jesus is a lifelong journey. Just when you think you've got Jesus figured out, when you think, I'm done, I get it, Jesus is going to call you to something new, a new question of faith, a new challenge, a new mission. The life of being a Jesus follower, one who believes that Jesus is the power of God to change the world, well, it's a life of ongoing transformation, rethinking, retooling, reconciling, and re-energizing. This whole movement from belonging to be behaving to believing is a lot like growing up in a family. When you were born, the first thing you needed to do was to be held. Not one of us could get around from one place to another without being carried. We were dependent, but we also belonged to the body of the one who had given birth to us. We couldn't do anything right away, let alone do anything for others. And we certainly couldn't explain why we needed things like clean diapers and baths. Over time, the people who parented us taught us how to behave, how to do things the way that is right for our family. They made sure we were fed every day, first with the liquid nourishment of mother's milk, onto spoonfuls of baby cereal and vegetables and fruits, to finger food, to the concept of forks and spoons. We were slowly taught over many years how to feed ourselves and then how to prepare our own food. 
we were always fed, even if we couldn't see why nutrition or proper preparation was important. Brushing our teeth, how to wear clothes that match, how to greet our elders, how to play well with others. We learned to act, and over time we learned to understand why it was important. It was behaving. And that's when believing starts to happen. If we've never brushed our teeth until we could explain all the circumstances and science about what happens when we leave the remnants of complex carbohydrates stuck to our tooth enamel, well, if we waited till we understood it and believed it, we'd have no teeth left, right? We learn to behave often without understanding in order to be around to gain understanding. Belong behave, believe. We live in a world where we are more isolated than ever before. From arguments about science and viruses, debates about politics, and a war that has continued for 20 years. We also know of new conflicts every day in other countries in the world. And our response is often to, to pull back, right? And hide from Anything and anyone who could bring danger inside our homes. We become isolated, separated, and alone. And I think that more than ever now, we need to know that we belong. About 20 years ago, I was on a mission trip with a large group of youth in a big city. A couple of the girls broke the rules we had set together for us to keep safe and to be accountable to one another. And when we got them safely back into the group, my co-leader and I had a heart-to-heart -heart with the girls. We explained that our anger and our disappointment came out of our concern for them. But we also let them know that their actions had consequences. A phone call to their parents, their phone call, not mine, a public apology to the group, and the loss of their freedom for the rest of the trip. Basically, that meant they had to be with me all the time. <laughs> What a curse, right? But we also needed them to understand that our Christian love and friendship with them was not lost by their actions, that they still belonged to Christ, and that they still belonged to our group. When we got home the next Sunday in church, we celebrated Holy Communion, and one of, as one of the girls from the trip came to my communion station to receive the body and blood of Christ, she was followed by her mother and her stepfather. I had often served the young woman and her mother before, but never her stepfather. He always remained in the pew. As he stretched out his hands to receive the bread, he had tears in his eyes. I have never had communion in this church before, he whispered. I didn't think I belonged. In the anguish and opportunity of a youth mission trip, the Holy Spirit... The Holy Spirit helped us to deal with the poor choice of a stepdaughter that ultimately led to a renewed sense of belonging, not only for Carla, but for her stepfather as well. Who knew that her stepdad needed to be told that he belonged? Certainly I did not. And so today I say to all of you watching this, you belong you belong to God, to Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. You belong in this community, no matter where you live, no matter what you've done, no matter what you've been told, no matter what you've believed about God. You belong. Hold on to that. Amen.
let us pray. Ever living and ever loving God, we praise you for your loving presence with us. Come Holy Spirit, take and transform our societies, that broken people find healing, that lonely people find love, that bitter people find peace, that fearful people find hope. Come, Holy Spirit, take our world's leaders and governments and bring renewal, that communication can be open, that relationships between hostile people and hostile nations will evaporate, that a hunger for justice addresses the hunger for food felt by so many. Come, Holy Spirit, fill your church that our worship will be ever more pleasing to you, that prayers will change our minds instead of trying to get you to change yours, that our lives will make a real difference to real people in the real world. Come, Holy Spirit, fill our lives with your presence so that more and more every day all that we do and say and hope will be an act of worship to you and an expression of love to others. To the glory of your name. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. What a glorious day that the Lord has made. And we have the particular blessing of being invited by Jesus Christ to be co-creators in this day. What type of day should we make it today? How about a day of generosity and blessing? If you would like to commit to support the ministry that we are doing through First Lutheran Church, we invite your generous financial contribution. We know that you are living as people of God in all of the circles to which you are called. Let's combine our resources today and make it a multiplicity of blessings that can go out shining the light of Jesus to all the world. Thank you for joining the mission that God has given us to share. Lord Jesus, we know that all of our blessings come directly from you. Everything around us is a sign of your love, your passion, and your generosity. 
Lord, give us a share of your generous spirit. We want to be your people, bearing your name and your love to all the world. Take what we offer, Lord, bless it and multiply it until all know your name. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. And now we prepare the Lord's table. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And now let us pray with the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The table of life is prepared. Come and dine. Find the place Jesus has set aside for you. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Wellspring of joy, through this meal you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining us for worship. Uh, today is the last day of our community meal for the spring. It begins at 11 o'clock at church. You can get it as a takeaway meal or you can come and join us in the courtyard to uh, have the meal at church. We're serving pulled pork sandwiches and hot dogs from the grill. A real picnic meal with some lawn games for the children from 11 to 12. As COVID restrictions are uh, lifting and we are seeing so many more people vaccinated. Thank you to all those who have received a vaccination, are in the process of receiving a vaccination. Uh, we are waiting patiently for vaccines to be available for children. And so we continue to exercise caution for the sake of the whole community. Uh, beginning in June, we will celebrate in the building on the first and third Sundays of the month at 10 a.m. Uh, masks will be required in the building. 
We will also provide an online service every Sunday in June and July, and that will continue indefinitely. Uh, but the format will change. We'll have live stream on the first and third. Uh, the second and fourth will be an online produced service pre-recorded as this one is. We hope you'll join us in any way that fits for you and uh, that you will be transformed by the Spirit. Receive this benediction. May God, our glorious God, grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus, the God of life, the creator, the savior, the sustainer. Bless you now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you.